Hi, so today what we're talking about is pressure vessels, and I just want to go through a little bit of how we get the stresses in thin-walled pressure vessels. We'll talk about shear stresses and all the 3D stuff in a little in a later uh, later video. So what I have here is a sphere, and I've got what amounts to a free body diagram because I've got sigma A times A2 and P times A1. Well, A1, if we're taking the radius here, is equal to the inner radius of the of the pressure vessel and t is the wall thickness but i think it becomes pretty apparent that a1 that inner area is pi r squared a2 is technically equal to pi times r plus t squared minus r squared and i could go through some math and actually it's not hard math because I'm, because r plus t squared is just r squared plus 2rt plus t squared so that's pi r squared 2rt t squared and that's gonna be minus r squared and you'll notice the R squareds take off, right? So technically, my area A2, that ring, is equal to pi times 2RT plus T squared. Now, if T is small, if T is, as the mathematicians write, two less than signs means it's really less than, right? If T is less than R, which really in our world means that T is less than about 0.1 R, is where we normally draw the line 10%, then what happens is we can say that that second term, I'll use the dashed line here, is just about zero by comparison. Something small squared gets really small. So we say that A2 is just 2 pi RT, the circumference around the inner radius times the thickness. So now, if I were to sum forces in the x direction and set that equal to zero, well, I'm going to have sigma A times 2 pi RT for a thin pressure vessel minus P pi R squared is equal to zero. I solve that and I get sigma A equal PR over 2T. And because it's a sphere, okay, symmetry means this is the same in all directions. This is the axial stress. normal stress, whichever, they are interchangeable terms in this sense, right? It's the axial stress in all directions of the surface. Key words here, of the surface. Of the pressure vessel. Okay, and again, we'll get into some other consequences in a future video but for now I just want to get the surface stresses in this one what this means is let's say you're blowing up a spherical balloon it's got a stress in the skin that's trying to pull the skin apart trying to make that rubber break of PR over 2t in all directions which then means of course eventually you inflate it too much the pressure gets too high the balloon pops big noise your, your dog gets scared right that's why the balloon eventually breaks because sigma a eventually exceeds the stress that can be was sustained by that rubber material okay let's go on to a cylinder then right which is a little bit different notice i've got the top if, I've, if this stylus is my cylinder i'm cutting it like such okay i'm cutting it perpendicular to the long axis of the cylinder i'm cutting it and i'm cutting it so i'm kind of cutting off the end so to speak i get a circle back this is the same setup as above, okay? So we could go through the math again, but I don't see the point either, right? 
sigma L, as we're calling it, the longitudinal stress along the long direction. It's trying to pull the skin apart along the length of, of the pressure vessel equals what we had for sigma A, which is equal PR over 2T. Okay, great. But there's also another stress in a cylinder because we have a different cut we can make. This isn't the same stress in all directions now because now what I have is this case. If I slice perpendicular to the direction I sliced earlier or if I have a cut that goes through the center of the cylinder along, along the long axis now, I get what looks like a half tube. Okay. Now, I've got AO and AI. I'm trying to make that I not look like a 1. But I, I certainly didn't want to use 1 and 2 because I used them before. Okay. So, AI, that inner area, is the easier one. Notice I've got 2R for my distance from edge to edge. And that makes sense because that's just the inner diameter, so to speak. So, it'll be 2R. And the total area there is actually a rectangle. It's going to be multiplied by that delta x distance. And that's what that kind of purplish area that I've cut, that I've drawn in there. I'll highlight it a little bit more now live. All right? This is what my area is that I'm, that the pressure acts on. So therefore, it's 2r delta x. And hopefully what we'll find as we do this, right? Delta x means that I've cut off a certain length of my vessel. I really don't want my equation to depend on how far along the length I've cut. I'd love that to disappear. Okay, that's the goal. All right, we see that a lot in this sort of stuff where we're like, geez, we have this dimension here. Can we make it go away, please? Like the area of a stress block when we did stress transformations. We wanted that to go away, and God bless America, it did. Right, so let's see if we can get the delta X to go away too, because that would be a bad one to have around. That outside area, okay is the area of a rectangle for the wall thickness. So that's going to have length delta x, just like the inner rectangle, thickness t. And I've got to remember I have one above and below. Why do I need to remember that? Because I'm going to sum forces in the z direction. What I'm going to find is that sigma h, and this sigma h, we're calling it sigma h because it is what we call the hoop stress, which sounds like a goofy name until you think of an old-fashioned wooden barrel from like an old Western movie or like, a, you know, I'm dealing, I'm dealing with a video game dimension perhaps or dim, generation perhaps, a little Red Dead Redemption or something like that, right? You see those little barrels sitting on the side? They've all got rings around them, right? Those rings are there to keep the barrel from pulling apart from blowing apart they're supporting the hoop stress hoops on barrels hoop stress go figure right sigma h times the area over which it, it acts well i've got a t delta x on top and i've got a t delta x on bottom so i've got 2t delta x and that's what the hoop stress does the pressure minus pressure times we said it was 2r delta x equals zero. Well, I can do some cancellation. Delta X's go away. The twos go away. Hey, Delta X went away. Winning, right? That's what we wanted. That's a win right there. All right. Sigma H is then PR over T. Notice also, this is not a coincidence. This is the way it happens, right? Note that sigma h is equal to 2 sigma l. The hoop stress is twice that longitudinal or axial stress. Okay. I want you to notice one more thing. There is no shear stress. In the coordinates we set up right there's no there's no mechanism in there by which to get a shear stress in these coordinate systems what does that mean for the stresses that we found for sigma a for the sphere and sigma l and sigma h for the uh for the cylinder we 
we don't see shear. Therefore, these stresses are principal stresses. Okay. One last thing. Okay, because you know, as you might imagine, I was once a college student, and I once, you know, lived by myself and such. And I'm not the best cook in the world, so I would take a hot dog, and I would microwave a hot dog, right? And you're thinking to yourself, why the heck are you mentioning hot dogs? Right, I'm I, I'm recording this at like 8:45 in the morning. I can tell you right now, I'm not hungry for a hot dog at all. But you throw one in the microwave, right? And you do it for too long, because you know you always overestimate. And what happens is the hot dog splits. And if this was my hot dog, it never splits like you cut it off this way, does it? It always splits like you cut it off that way. A hot dog, when you microwave it like that, you're boiling the water inside. That produces steam. That produces, oh gosh, pressure. And we have a cylinder-shaped pressure vessel. And wouldn't you know it, it breaks because of the hoop stress. Not the longitudinal, because the hoop stress happens to be larger. Yes, your hot dog is splitting in the direction of the larger stress. Fun, isn't it? Right? Physics works, is what this is. And you can test it yourself if you're hungry a little later with just a hot dog and a microwave. Okay, but that's what we come down to with pressure vessels. For a sphere, we have the same stress in all directions. We'll talk more about the consequences of that when we get to the shear stresses in the next video on this. But in the cylinder, we have the hoop stress and the longitudinal. The longitudinal stress is the same as the stress seen in a sphere. The hoop stress is twice that value, which tells you also, if you can make a spherical pressure vessel, you know, it'll have lower stress. Hey, it'll be able to use less material. The problem is spheres aren't the easiest things to manufacture. And what's even worse is that try to put a sphere in the back of a truck or the back of a train car. They don't fit so well, right? Cylinders are just easier, which is why we make cylindrical shaped pressure vessels. Okay, so hopefully, hopefully you got a little bit out of that and I'll see you next time.